Okay, so let's move on to a second type of lens. We first looked at a, a positive or converging lens. Now we're gonna look at a basic negative or diverging lens. So again, positive lenses were also called positive focal length, convex, or also converging. Because if we had parallel rays of light hitting that positive lens, they would all converge at the focal point, right? Well, a diverging lens is different, as you can see here. It doesn't look like a positive lens. If I have parallel rays of light coming in, they're all now diverging as they go through the lens instead of converging on a focal point on the other end like we had for a positive lens. A couple other things change as well. The curvature is now concave. Before it was convex, now it's concave. And remember, when we switch that curvature from concave to convex, our radii that we feed into this equation predicting focal length becomes negative, not positive, so I've got negative radiuses. If I have negative numbers here, that makes my focal length negative, right? Well, look at this. If you basically take these rays and they're diverging, but you trace them back to where they could be virtually, you get a focal length which is now on this side of the lens, which is a negative value. And so when we have these types of lenses, we will call them one of three things. We will call them diverging, because the rays diverge. We will call them concave, because the surface is concave. Or we'll call them a negative focal length lens, as before, as compared to a positive lens, which had a positive focal length. So let's take a look at this in greater detail. Now let's put an object out here at a position Y1, okay, and a distance, a, a height Y1, and a distance Z1 here from the lens. And if I do the ray tracing and I look at how the refraction causes the light to come through the lens out to the other side, and I trace back those lines of the, of the, of the light, so trace it back from there, trace it back from there, and trace it back from there, you can see my image appears here, okay? My image Y2 at a position Z2. Now, a couple things have changed here. This is an image that you cannot see. If you have a lens, you always observe out here, so you can't see this, hence it's called a virtual image. The other thing is notice that Z2 is no longer negative. We've switched its sides here, so now it's on this side, okay? And so, well, Z2 is negative. Z2 is on the wrong side, it's negative. So when we put it in here, the negatives cancel out because Z2 is now negative compared to where it was before. So the negatives cancel out. What's that mean? Well, if I have a positive and a positive and a positive here for Y1, that means Y2 is also positive. My virtual image is not inverted, okay? So, our magnification sign for this negative lens will also be positive. Remember that, for a negative lens or concave lens or diverging lens, the magnification will be positive, meaning that the image and the object are both on, in the same direction on the y-axis. So this vir virtual image, what can we do to see it? I mean, if, it's, if it doesn't exist, why even care about it? Well, there is something we can do to see the virtual image. And we're going to do that in, this, in lab this week. What we'll do to see the virtual image is here's our negative lens, here's our positive lens. We'll put the positive lens here to extract the virtual image and turn it back into a real image. So let's see what we've done here and how we do this. And you're going to have to do this in lab, okay? So I've got my object here, Z1, okay? So you're going to draw an arrow on a piece of paper or something like that, okay? And then you're going to have these two lenses and you're going to try to see it as an image out here. Now, my object Z1 has a virtual image Z2 for the negative lens, okay? We just showed that on the previous slide. So those are the green colors here. I also can consider this virtual image Z2 to be the object for the, po the positive lens. So I'll call that not Z1, because I already use Z1. I'll call that Z1 prime here. And that'll become the new object for this positive lens. And then my new image for the positive lens will be Z2 prime. So the positive lens has the primes. The negative lens doesn't have the primes for its notation. So what we'll ask you to do this week is we'll ask you to basically determine the focal length of a negative lens. And how you're gonna do that is you'll basically have the object 
be like an arrow on a piece of paper. You'll illuminate it. And then you'll basically set these lenses up as follows, such that they're separated by the sum of their focal length. I'll talk about more of that in a second. And then you'll make, take a white card out here and you'll keep moving it further and further until you get to a position for the white card where all of a sudden you'll see that arrow show up nice and crisp here, nice and in focus, but it'll be inverted as you expect. So at this point, you want to figure out, use that to figure out your focal length for the negative lens. So how will you do that? Well, we will give you f prime, which is the focal length for the positive lens. So we'll give you this value. So once you have this, you found this by moving the card till you got a nice crisp image in focus, you know you can then calculate z1, right? If I know the focal length, focal length, I know z2 by finding it by moving the card till I get a crisp image, I know z2, I can calculate z1. So then I've got this z1 position. Well, I, I can next figure out what Z1 is by subtracting. I can, well, I could find Z2, that is, by subtracting Z1 prime for the positive lens from the distance between the center of both lenses, okay? So if I want to know what this is here, all I want to do is subtract this from the distance here, right? This here is this minus is this minus this, and that makes sense because if you do that, you're going to get a negative number, meaning Z2, yes, indeed, is out here, okay? So then I've got Z2. Well, once I have Z2 for the negative lens, and I've got Z1, if I've got Z1 and Z2 for the negative lens, I can calculate focal length. And at that point, you can also calculate everything else as well. So we're going to do that in the lab this week. And this is also showing you how you can use a positive lens to extract a virtual image created by a negative lens into an image that you can actually see. Now, these combinations of negative and positive lenses can also be used to create something called a beam expander. And this is critically important because we're going to use this in multiple labs this, uh, this, in, this, in this course. And we're going to set one up this week and you're going to create one. So how you create a beam expander is basically, let's say I have a laser beam coming here and it has a certain diameter to it. If you put it through these lenses, it'll come out the other side, still nice and parallel, but with a larger diameter for the laser, meaning the beam has been expanded from a small diameter to a large diameter, but it still stays nice and parallel. To set up beam expanders, it's very simple. You basically take two lenses and you put them at the sum of the focal lengths for their distance between them. And so if my positive lens has a focal length of this, which is positive, and my negative lens has a focal length, which is shorter in this case, but negative, if I add this positive number to a negative number, this gets subtracted from that, and the separation between them is the resulting value. So this distance here is this minus this, because this is negative. You can also create a beam expander using two positive lenses, and you do the exact same thing. You simply make the separation distance between the lenses be the sum of the focal lengths. In this case, this lens has a positive focal length, so they are further apart. It doesn't get subtracted like it did up here. Okay? You can see the same thing. The light goes through, and it emerges parallel and expanded as well. This uh, version up here is called a Galilean telescope or beam expander by Galileo, discovered in 1609, and this is how he used his first created his first telescopes, which was limited to about 30x magnification, but if you think about that, if you're observing the night sky, seeing more than an order of magnitude magnification allowed him to see things which no one else could see before. And then Johannes Kepler created the Keplerian telescope using two positive lenses shortly thereafter in 1611. So at this point, take another break and make sure you can answer these questions as well.